In the 18th century, the mentally retarded were often ignored, punished, and exploited. Today, things are supposed to be different. Modern 20th century man is much more scientific and civilized. Today, we no longer punish the mentally retarded. We don't exploit them either. We have come a long, long way. Now, we ship them 25 miles out of town to a state-operated institution and forget them while they decay from neglect. Penhurst, a state school and hospital, was designed to house the mentally and physically disabled. But did it succeed in doing that? Did it ever attempt to move beyond just storing the disabled and try to rehabilitate them into society? To understand these questions, we must delve deeper into the history of Penhurst. Penhurst opened in November 1908, and in just four years, it began to suffer from an issue that would plague it for its entire existence, overcrowding. The institution originally supported its running cost through making residents work without pay. The largest and most profitable of Penhurst Ventures was its farming program. The institution could pay for all running costs and even turn a profit since they did not have to pay the working patients through this farming program. The total campus was 1,400 acres in area located in Spring City, Pennsylvania, with 710 of that being used for farming. The remaining 690 acres were used for other activities. In 1913, the state legislature of Pennsylvania appointed a commission for the care of the mentally disabled. The commission decided that mentally challenged people were unfit to function alone in society and recommended all mentally challenged individuals be placed in custodial care. At the same time, they did not build any new facilities, so disabled people were placed into already crowded systems. This is what started Penhurst overcrowding issues, and they would not be alleviated until the final closing of the institution. On top of this, the state did not provide additional funding to account for this sudden influx of new residents. In 1916, the Board of Trustees approved a new plan to construct all female cottages for patients who could live on their own without direct assistance. The females were removed from the main campus to reduce the amount of unexpected pregnancies within the institute. The original campus plans had not even accounted for female residents, let alone 700 of them.